Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This week we're talking about matrices. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. So a quick explanation of what a matrix is, uh, it's just another way of affecting your sound between your input and your output. So um, instead of going straight from your in straight to your left to right um, uh, fader to your outs, it's just another port in between. So let's take a quick look. I've made a little flow chart for us here. Um, so again, so we've got our input, so our microphone, our guitar, our pastor's mic, so on and so forth, in a very typical um, kind of simple, you know, analog or digital, it doesn't matter, um, system. It would be going from your input to a single left-right fader, and then if you follow this along, it's going to go to um, a stereo, in this case, um, left and right output and that's it that's very simple um which is fine but once you start getting into a more um complicated system um then you're going to need a little bit more control to make sure that what's happening with uh with these isn't going to um, be an issue with your other outputs so in this case um, a very typical setup for me is to have a main left and right output so those are our, our speakers that are producing our highs a subs output for our low end, um, a lobby feed for um, a parent's room or out in the lobby where maybe you have TV set up. Uh, again, the same uh, level and tone isn't gonna work for your main left and right, the same as your lobby feed necessarily. And then finally, um, we've got our stream feeds. This is anything that you're sending to like a camera or like a uh, live podcast or Ustream or anything like that. Um, and then on some consoles, you're going to have a USB recording um, that's not technically a matrix, um, but it is something that's, again, coming off the left and right fader. Um, so anything you do to this left right fader will affect all these things. So that's why this is an important episode. So this week we're going to look at uh, how you can set up matrices on a X32 or M32 console. The reason why I picked these is because they uh, are very cheap and easy to use. Uh, a lot of churches have them now and uh, I think we can probably make them sound a bit better. So let's take a look at how to do that. So again, uh, looking at our chart over here, oops, excuse me. Um, so we've got our inputs on the left, and then on our X32, we've got our inputs on the left. And then we've got our outputs over on the right. And when you first turn the console on, it's going to start up with um, your uh, groups or DCAs. So we're going to go down here to this matrix button. And don't be uh, shocked if you, obviously I'm not using the actual console here, but this is the editing program. It looks and acts exactly the same. Um, so, you know, don't get confused. The buttons are gonna be in approximately the same places. So what's happening here is the uh, left to right feed, um, I've got set to, um, to unity, so it's not boosting or cutting the signal. So if you normally run your left to right down here because it's too loud, this is going to fix this. Um, you want to have this up at zero because by doing this, your USB recording is now automatically 10 decibels quieter than it should be because it's, again, feeding off that left-right fader. So we want to keep this at zero with uh, as little or no uh, EQ or compression because what we're going to do is we're going to do that over on these guys. So we're going to keep this at zero and then what we've got set up on here, if you click on the home button and then the sends tab, uh, this is where you control how much of this goes to each of your matrices. So we've got these set up exactly the same as what I just said over here. We've got a main left, right, a subs feed, a lobby feed, and a stream feed. And again, this is also going to a USB recorder if you're doing that. So what we're doing is we're, we've clicked on left, right, and we're saying, okay, I want to send 0.0. .0. So again, not boosting or cutting from my original signal at this point. I'm sending my feed into all these matrices. 
Uh, because this is a left and right feed, anything that's linked, so I've linked these two together, the left will go to one side, the right will go to the other. Same with your stream feed. For these subs and lobby feed, um, because uh, you don't necessarily need them in stereo and we don't have enough matrices to do that even if we wanted to in this case, uh, it's going to take those left and right and sum them down into one mono feed. So anything that goes to the left or the right will come out your subs or your lobby. Um, not you know, just left to the subs and right to the lobby, so you'll be good either way. Uh, so we've got them all set to 0, 0.0 and then on here, we use our faders to level them out to get the volume that we want that's appropriate for the room. So again, like we were saying earlier, if you had your, your main left right at negative 10 because it was just too hot, well instead you can keep that at zero and you can turn your mains and your subs to negative 10. And then from there you can level them out, You know, get a little bit more sub if you need, uh, and then set your lobby and your stream feed uh, appropriately as well. If you're setting up a matrix system for the first time, and you usually have this, uh, this normal setup of an input to a left-right fader to just two outs, um, you're gonna wanna be careful the first time you set this up so that it doesn't kinda bite you. So here's how I would do that. So we would go through, uh, first thing you're gonna need to do is turn everything down. And you're gonna need to route your, um, your your main speakers, you, these outputs, they're gonna no longer be routed to your left right fader, they need to be routed to your matrices, whichever you choose. In this case, it's matrix one and two. If you don't know how to do that, you can go online, there's a bunch of resources for it, uh, or I'll be making a video for that in the next few weeks. Once you've routed everything correctly to the matrices that you're gonna use, um, then you can uh, start to send some signal to it. But first what we're gonna do, if you don't already have this built in, we're gonna put a, uh, a crossover on your mains and your subs. So you can click on your main left and right. I'm assuming you guys have a concept of how to do this, but uh, in this case, I'm gonna put a low cut on my mains. Uh, and this is just for example, but I've set it to 105 Hertz. And then over on the subs, I've done the exact opposite. I've got a high cut going down to the same frequency, so 105 Hertz, uh, so that only highs are coming out on my mains and only lows are coming out of my subs. Uh, you don't have to do this from the start, but with the lobby feed, you're probably gonna wanna do something similar, cutting out some of the low end. Your stream feed, you'll probably keep fairly flat, but you might wanna have some compression on that. And you're definitely gonna wanna have some compression on your lobby feed. Um, but again, you're gonna play with that later on. If you don't remember how compression works or haven't watched that episode yet, please go check out part one and part two um, especially part one of the basics of compression because you're going to want to use that to keep that lobby feed from being out of control. So right now we're just going to focus on our mains. Um, so we've got our left right at 0.0. .0. Uh, we've got all of our faders down. We're going to play some sort of iPod or uh, CD player, computer, whatever you have that's going to give you a good sound, good sound of an album that you've heard before and you know well. It's my cat playing around. Uh, and you, it's important that you have everything flat to start, uh, minus those crossover settings that we did. So I've got my iPod. There's no EQ, there's no compression. I've got my left, right. Again, there's no EQ, there's no compression. My mains left and right only have low cut and high cut on them. Or if you need to, if you already had a good EQ on your main left and right, before, you might want to copy that over uh, as you see fit. I'm going to turn my iPod channel up between negative 10 and negative 20, somewhere in there. And the reason why I'm, I'm not uh, turning it up to zero is because this is a mastered, uh, hopefully mastered file that you're listening to that's going to be much louder than your normal instruments. Uh, so this is going to um, kind of be closer to the range of a guitar or vocal that you would actually plug in later. Also, too, it gives you more headroom to work with later on. So once you've got that going, you should be seeing signal coming in on your left to right, but not hearing it, assuming that you've routed everything correctly. And now you can start to turn up your mains. Again, we got our left to right at 0, 0.0, and now we can take our mains and turn them up, and you should start to hear that coming out of your top speakers. Once you find an appropriate level for that, then you're gonna turn the subs up to match uh, however you need to to make it sound the way you want. And then you'll do the same with your lobby and your stream feed, uh, whatever sounds right for the room. 
and uh, you should be good to go. So again, the idea being that you're putting your EQ on your matrices, not on your main left to right. So on your matrices, not your main left to right. And therefore, any recordings that you have, so your USB recording, or in this case, your stream recording, is not being affected by the EQ that you need to make your room sound good. Uh, so let's say that your room is boomy and has too much of like about 200 hertz in it. If you were to EQ that out of your main left right, then that would mean that your USB recording would be hurting in the 200 hertz range because you've cut that out. But if you EQ your matrix, then you're gonna be fine because this won't have an EQ on it. You're gonna have a flat environment for USB recording. So if you're trying to mix everything to sound like that, that album that you listen to when you set your system up, then it's going to be closer to that because you're working in the same environment. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information. Rawr!